This video is going to go through the power plan modules within SiteMax. If you haven't already seen the pro plan modules, which are all the field tracking modules within SiteMax, I will copy the link in the description below. So that will cover those modules there. But today we're going to mainly focus on drawing management, punch lists, RFIs, submittal tracking, purchase order tracking, and documents. I'll start by showing you here the dashboards. This is a project dashboard with all your current and live projects on it. So if you're wanting to go into a project to see any of this information, simply just click on the project tile. That will take you to the day view. So this is going to give you a summary of everything that's happening on your job site, your notice boards, your daily weather, your photos, time cards, purchase orders, deficiencies, site reports, and safety reports all within one place. Now I'm going to start by showing you our punches module. So our punches module can be accessed, obviously, like all our other modules from mobile, tablet, or desktop within here. I'll show you here on the desktop what it looks like. So each deficiency has a templated form that can be filled out on it. It can have a selected priority. It can be assigned a type of the punch item. So it can be either deficiency, warranty, or extra. Obviously, it can be labeled as an item, assigned a location and sublocation, due date, room, value with a dollar amount, and then you can input the description. Now you can also add photos and videos to this as well. So if you're on your mobile device, just directly through your phone. If you're on your computer, you can select from your computer or upload them as well from your project photos. Now this is where you can also assign it. So you can assign it either to a subtrade or contact within your company, or you can assign it to a user within your company. So this will just pull from your drop-down list within here that you can assign, and you can add those in here. You can also select whether you want to notify the assignees through an email as well as notify any PMs or office managers within there as well. You can turn that on or off for each of the deficiencies. You also see further tagging of divisions, cost codes, and custom tagging if needed um, to further specify each of your deficiencies. The bottom here as well is an area where your assignees or subtrades can add resolution comments. So they can add comments in an open text field as well as attach photos to the individual deficiency item. Now from here, we have a highly customizable reporting dashboard. So this obviously you can come through and just scroll through for your reports. But if you're wanting to get more specific and run any custom filters, all the data points are filterable within here. Say for instance, you want to see all your open deficiency items here. I'll just select open. I will select all the deficiencies on here and I can generate a report. So you can include photos. You can click to include a cover page table of contents and any resolutions. You can just quickly just generate that within here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So you can preview that and send this out to any of your uh, external clients or external vendors. This will have a cover page with your logo, company information, project information, as well as a table of contents along with the individual deficiencies here. So if you do need to share it either as a PDF copy um, or as a uh, physical copy, that's the easiest way to do that. And again, it's very easy to send out of the system. You can directly email it from this dashboard. Next, I will show you is our RFI module. RFIs are also very straightforward uh, to create within here. So for instance, each RFI has a templated um, form that you can fill out within here. So this, again, can be done for your mobile, tablet, or desktop application. You can input a title for the individual RFI, assign a due date to it. It'll automatically have the RFI manager as the PM of the job, but you can also customize and edit that. You'll select the initiant user within here. Initiant date will just be the default date that this is being created. Then you can add recipients. So this pulls from your contacts list. So this can be both users or external users within the system. On the project, you can assign it to someone, add a location, reference it to a drawing, which I'll show you more of later. And then you can also input scheduled impact or cost, cost impact if applicable. Now we give you an open text here as well to answer or ask the question. So this is open text field as well as a place to attach documents or photos relating to the RFI. We also have an added section for internal notes. So if there's anything that needs to be shared internally, this will not be shared externally with anyone that you share this RFI with. You can add them in this open text box as well. Now, when you create the RFI, you will click Submit, which will automatically distribute the RFI to all the recipients that have been added onto the RFI. So it'll automatically be sent to their inbox on their email provider. It'll come from you and it'll say this RFI 123 requires a response. 
Now our system is very uh, capable of handling anyone outside of SiteMax. So you don't need to be a SiteMax user or have a login. You can just simply respond to that email and we'll track all the responses within SiteMax. So when the external user responds to the RFI with their answer to the question, it'll automatically be logged against that RFI within here. So you're gonna see here that Braden responded at 257. Yes, proceed with all the information as well as an attachment on his email. So that's automatically all gonna be tracked here. We also summarize all this information as well in a PDF format. So this also all will get summarized there if you need a copy to print off or share as well. This will again be branded with your logo, include all the RFI information as well as any of the responses included. Again, like our other dashboards, these are all filterable by all the data points within here and they are all mass exportable as well as either CSV, Excel or PDF logs. Next, I'll show you our submittals module. This is our dashboard for the submittals module. I'll show you what it looks like to create one. So if I open up a submittal here, again, we're gonna ask you to label the submittal name within here. It's automatically gonna assign a submittal number onto here. You can select from your spec book, um, which you have already uploaded into the system. It'll select your section details. So you can select them from within here or search for them within here as well. You can assign it to a larger package, which you can group multiple submittals under, assign it a cost code. Again, you can select the type of submittal. So we have shop drawing, sample, product manual, product information, prints, plans, and documents. For this one, I'm gonna select a shop drawing. I can select the vendor for my contacts list, assign a location, and then build out the due date schedule. Below this, it's gonna give me, again, open text where I can put in a description for the submittal, what I'm needing, what I'm requiring, as well as a place to upload any PDF documents or photos. Once I've done that, it'll open up our workflow. This is the most important part of the SiteMax workflow for submittals, and this is what's gonna save you a lot of time. This is where you can build out your custom workflow that will manage the submittal process from submitter, reviewer, to approver. So automatically it's going to assign the submitter as whoever you assigned as the initiant uh, that you, you need to submit the submittal package. So it's automatically going to put the contact information in there. You can obviously assign it a due date. What that's going to do is it's automatically going to send an email with a link to your subtrade or whoever you're sending this to. And it's going to give them the option to respond and upload the document in there. So I'll show you what that looks like. This is going to be that document that they're going to receive. So it's gonna have, again, your branding. So logo on here, all the project information, all the general information of the submittal package that you had uploaded, as well as the actual document that they can view. And then it's gonna give them a place for their vendor response. So it's gonna come here, give them a place to upload a file within here. So I'll upload this file. You can also go in and view and mark up that file. So if they need to come in here, they can view and mark up that file as well. So we have all your annotations, stamping, um, that you can do within here. But if they want to do that within their own software, they can also do that and just drag and drop and upload the uh, PDF file here as well. Then for comments, they can add any custom comments here. So as per note, they can add that in, review it, and they'll just submit the document. Now what our system will do when this document is submitted is it will automatically pass it along now and mark it as a submitted document, and it's gonna now move it on to the next person in the workflow, which is John, who is the reviewer of the submittal package. So he's gonna receive an email now with that document that Braden just uploaded, and he's gonna be able to review, add his stamp or any markups, either approve it or reject it and send it back. And again, the subsequent workflow will continue on to the reviewer, and you can add as many people as reviewers and approvers in the workflow as needed until it gets completed. Um, that will basically track that all within there. As you saw here earlier as well, we have the dashboard. So this is gonna track all your submittal packages in one place. So you're gonna be able to sort them by name. It's gonna have uh, red icons for anything overdue. So it makes it really easy just to keep track of what's tracking on time or what's overdue within here for you to keep attention to. I'll also show you here our purchase order module. Again, very similar to our other modules in terms of its formatting and how it works. But this is obviously going to be formatted specifically to a purchase order. So what this is meant to track is basically requisition between the field and office for your purchase orders. So it's replacing those paper books, emails that go back and forth, and basically being able to easily submit from a mobile or tablet device to get approval on a purchase order. 
So if I click here, it's going to show you the template for a purchase order within here. So it's automatically going to assign a PO number, which is going to be based off the project name and an ascending order numbering system. You can customize that as well if you guys have any custom numbering within the system. You can also come here and select which type of PO. Is it a rental, purchase? Is it for labor or services? And then you can select your vendor, date required, any of your reference terms within here, invoice numbers, what the actual item is on your PO, cost codes, dollar amounts, amounts and quantities. You can add multiple items to your POs as you can see here as well. You can add any tax that's applicable. These are all custom line items for your tax. Any additional instructions, internal notes, additional images or PDFs, and you can send it for signature. So you can work the whole workflow process of a PO to signature within the system. We also have the ability once an, a PO is approved, it can automatically be sent to your accounting email to then be uploaded into your accounting software as an approved purchase order. So we'll take care of basically everything before the accounting software. So to get the approval and the back and forth for it to go to your accounting team and upload it into your accounting software. Lastly here, I'm gonna show you is our documents module. Our documents module here is just open cloud storage for all project documents that need to be shared between field teams, office teams. So you have full customization of adding folders within here. So you can build your own folder trees, drag and drop your own files within here as well. And you can add those within here. Um, very easy to edit, very easy to manipulate within here and move between the teams. And again, this is just open source. So you can add whatever documentation in whatever format you need. And lastly, I'll just show you our contacts database as well. So this is going to be where all your contacts can be stored. You'll have a company-wide contacts database, but this is for project specific. So to be able to man manage all your project contacts in one place, you can obviously have all their basic information here, but you're also going to be able to track um, report number of reports filled out, drawings that they've been shared on, RFIs that they've been shared on, change orders and submittals within here as well. So it gives you a little dashboard to keep track of your subtrades or any external vendors on a job. Now, how this all ties together and the central place that a lot of these modules will tie into is our drawings module. Now, our drawings module is very easy to utilize. Um, you can simply just upload your drawing sets as PDFs. You can upload any revisions within here uh, as PDFs into the system. Our reading system will automatically number and label your drawings within here. So you'll be able to access those numbered and labeled from, again, mobile, tablet, and desktop. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I click into here, this is a drawing set. As you can see, you can add markups, you can add pins onto the drawings. How that is all done is through your toolbar here on the left. So you have the ability to pin items such as RFIs, deficiencies, tasks, and change orders directly onto the drawing. You can also attach photos and PDFs as well as URLs. And then you have all your basic markup tools on here as well to do markups onto the drawing directly. These pins are all color coded depending on the module that they're link linking to. For instance, I can see that this punch item has been completed. I can see when it's been completed and I can open up a preview of it directly within the drawing. So that goes for deficiencies. The same with RFIs as well. I can preview RFIs within here as well as just linking photos onto here directly as well. So it's very easily of just dra dragging and dropping here, either selecting from my existing RFIs that I've created or adding a brand new RFI from directly within the drawing. So this will all be synced up and live in real time and available to your whole team at any point to be able to access. You can also run filters and layers on here as well. So you can also hide the pins if needed or show only specific pins that you're looking for. So that is the power plan module. Again, if you're wanting to see any more detail on this, feel free to book a demo and we can dive through this in further depth.